Hey Bubble Family, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to talk about toxic femininity and the Me Too movement and why I believe trial by media is now incredibly damaging, especially to abuse victims. So if you want to join in with this video, if you would like what I, what I do here, like the video, subscribe to the channel and if you want to carry on, you know what to do. Grab your drink of choice. <laughs> I don't have my drink with me today, but grab your drink of choice. And whether it is tea, coffee, Baileys, vodka, gin, whatever is your drink of choice, it is five o'clock somewhere, or you can be really healthy and just drink some water. Um, yeah, so grab your drink. Let's dive right in. So Bubble family, welcome to this channel, to the people that have been watching me from the very beginning and to the people that have just joined. So if anyone that has just joined and doesn't know, I'm a qualified therapist and I give my thoughts and opinions, um, which some um, can be a little bit controversial. I know a lot of people don't always agree and that's okay as long as you're respectful in the comments. So. I want to talk a little bit about toxic femininity and why I, the why I think that the media is actually creating this terrible um, narrative of that women abusers are innocent um, just because they've come out and stated that they are the victims of abuse. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not towards anyone who has been abused, no matter who you are. Um, this is not about that. This is about the people that seem to come out, which we are seeing now with the Amber Heard trial. And of course, there is also the famous um, incident with Evan Rachel Wood and Marilyn Manson, where she has come out and stated that he um, groomed her and abused her. Well, now what has come out, because now Marilyn Manson is now suing her for defamation. Um, so very similar to the Johnny Depp trial. And perhaps, maybe... It's Johnny Depp's courage to fight back that has created Marilyn Manson to decide, actually, this is not OK and I'm going to fight back because now a lot of things are coming out. Allegedly, I have to say, on either side, she's obviously stated what she stated um, and he's also come out and allegedly stated that she has done some very serious things and actually it's a bogus charge. So I want to talk about this because I feel this is incredibly damaging. You know, what I, you know, even when I'm Googling, even now, which is creating me to be so angry. So this is kind of like my Monday meltdown, if you like. Um, when I've gone on and I've Googled the Amber Heard and Johnny Tepp trial, what I'm seeing is still this kind of um, attitude of, you know, oh, we don't want to see them airing their dirty laundry in public. Um, you know, this is this is like a car crash TV. Um, uh, you know, that, that a lot of people seem to be, a lot of articles seem to be still siding with Amber, bringing up Johnny Depp's um, drug and alcohol abuse um, and, and the fact that he was slamming cupboards and, um, and, and showing himself on camera to be very angry. But what they're bypassing, which I find astounding, and this, this clickbait media, which to me, I, I was always under the impression that years ago, journalists had some kind of integrity. Like if a journalist was hovering around, it was they, they were trying to find the truth and, and you would kind of panic because it's like, oh, a journalist is poking around. You know, I mean, I know they could be a bit flamboyant with what, what their articles are. Um, but for the most part, they were trying to dig for the truth. Well, where that, where has that gone? Where are those journalists now? Because it seems to me that all they care about are clicks and money. And it doesn't matter who they damage. Um, you know, we've seen this on Twitter, we've seen this on, across the board on online media, and I, I'm even seeing it on YouTube when people are, um, you know, news outlets are covering the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial. You know, for the most part, what I'm kind of seeing, um, and it obviously could be to do with my algorithm and what I'm getting, but what I'm noticing, and especially in the articles, is this kind of almost like this is like a, a circus, like, the, you know, the, they, these two should have kept everything private. You know, what they're forgetting is that Amber Heard started this by lying. 
by lying about somebody. And I, just because she didn't name him in the op-ed, that, that this media circulation that happened from that was the fact that he was then defamed. You know, he lost Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, and just because he's a celebrity, it doesn't mean to say that he should not fight his corner. You know, and, and this is what I'm really struggling with, this whole attitude of, you know, the, the mockery that's kind of going behind this trial. You know, let's not forget, we've got underneath this, we've got two very damaged people. We've got one that has got, in my opinion, narcissistic personality disorder, psychopathy, um, and, you know, comes from this abusive family background that has created this kind of persona and then targeted, I believe, char targeted Johnny Depp, uh, utilised him, you know, very similar to what somebody else we talk about on this channel. And, and, and not only that, staged photographs to create it look like he'd passed out. Unless you're there, you don't know whether he was asleep or whether he was passed out. Only the two people that can that were there can talk about this unless someone else was there. So she's saying he was passed out from the drink and drugs. And yet he's saying he fell asleep, you know. But interestingly enough, you know, a lot of the media are kind of playing it. This this kind of narrative that he's oh, he's passed out still from drink and drugs. When a Amber Heard herself has openly admitted that she's abused drink, she's abused drug drugs numerously numerously throughout that relationship even you can hear it on the tapes where she's talked about it but yet somehow he's the monster because he's vented he's vented in text to friends now I'm sorry all right maybe not in the context that 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 he's been very graphic in what he said but this is probably a man who's at his wits end who absolutely has got to the point where he hates her now OK, like I say, don't get me wrong. Many of us, when we've hated, possibly hated somebody, hasn't resorted to the text that he's resorted to. But, you know, as far as I'm aware, texts do not mean that you're a violent, you're a, you're a domestic, abusive, violent person. They are angry. All right. They are unhinged and not particularly great and don't show the person a great light. But that does not mean that you have been physically violent. Smacking and smashing a cupboard and I'm sure there are plenty of people out there in the world that have chosen to hit a cupboard or a wall because they've got so frustrated and so angry that they would rather do that than actually either hurt themselves, which, well, in, in turn, kind of maybe they do, um, but hurt somebody else. So I actually think as much as, OK, that's not a great way for you to deal with your anger as a therapist. I absolutely know that. But that is a better option than hitting a person. There is not one shred of evidence and let's make that clear there is not one shred of evidence that shows he has been abusive to her physically other than her orchestrated well <laughs> alleged orchestrated bruises now to me if you are going to take pictures of a mirror which has got graffiti on it if you are going to take um pictures of a orchestrated damaged bed which i'm sorry with a pen knife you can absolutely see that this that those splinters look like not where someone's this is not a slip of a boot um so in, you can see that she's taken pictures of um a, a staged uh, set with with para, drug paraphernalia there's there's you know other other photographs of him being passed out but yet not one photograph of where she's been sexually abused she's not not one photograph where she's got this broken nose bloodied nose blood you know multiple uh f which would have if she'd have been punched in the face she would have had a, a fractured cheekbone i'm pretty sure i'm not I'm, I'm not a doctor but i'm pretty sure she would not have just had this tiny little mark on her face you you cannot tell me that if you are someone that goes around staging photographs that you don't think to take photographs of yourself that you where you have been abused you know so what this woman has basically done has done this article and then people have then and then and then she's gone on and then talk, talked about her abuse with a powerful person of course people are going to jump to the fact that 
they think she's talking about Johnny Depp. And she never denied it. Here, that's the key point here. Because she states the fact that she never named him. But she never denied it either. So when the stories were circulating, she could have shut it down at any point. But she didn't. So then she jumped onto the Me Too movement. And then she utilised this storyline to then kind of create her to be the spokesperson for um for debut uh, for abuse victims out there this i find utterly disgusting especially also with the fact that it's now come out that she stole her assistant's abuse story and started talking about this as if it was her own you know this hasn't actually been talked about much uh, in the media and i'm pretty unsure why um because it seems to me that they want to believe or they're trying to orchestrate Amber to still be the victim, when actually it's Johnny Depp that's the victim. Yes, okay, he he is a, is, is a damaged person, but that doesn't mean to say that he deserves this. He doesn't deserve to be lied about. He doesn't deserve to be spoken about in such a way that creates um, him to lose um, one of the biggest um, roles in his in his career. You know, and, no, and two, in fact, because he lost Fantastic Beasts as well. Um, now, you know, to me, what I absolutely fine and i and i and i know i don't translate my anger so much on here but my anger is this one sidedness of the media that and and people that are talking about this um in the media that almost create johnny to he should not have aired his dirty look this is not airing your dirty laundry in public this is defending yourself against someone who has accused you of domestic violence why should he not defend himself you know this is happening all too often where we are seeing women are using the me too movement to 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 attack men now i'm not saying that there are not legitimate uh, stories of abuse of course there are but there are so are there with men and johnny depp is one of them in my opinion just from what i have read i have heard with my own ears where she's acknowledged where you tell your this this man you're not punched i'm hitting you but you're not punched the very definition of hitting somebody is domestic violence. And I'm sorry, then the people are coming out going, it's not domestic violence because the person has to be in a position of power. So, no, absolutely not. If that's the case, then why? Then gaslighting then isn't, uh, verbal abuse isn't a, a classed as abuse. Emotional abuse isn't classed as abuse then. You know, because you can't emotionally abuse someone. You can't gaslight somebody because you're in a, not in a position of power. So a woman isn't allowed to abuse somebody because she's smaller in frame and she's not absolute crap. You can be abusive. It doesn't matter what size you are if the person is not somebody who is going to defend themselves in a physical way. If you are somebody that is going to abuse somebody and they don't know how to stand up for themselves, you are in a position of power. It doesn't matter what size you are or what gender you are. If you can manipulate somebody, if you can abuse and hurt somebody, you are causing them distress. That is, it, that's domestic violence. I'm so, oh, the, oh, I think that some of the women that are coming out and saying can't be domestic violence because he's a man, she's a woman. He's in a position of power. What utter, it's this type of person that is creating the problem why men feel afraid to come forward because they are ridiculed for coming forward which is what's happening now now i believe good on johnny depp for coming forward and facing all of this because what he's now showing is that it doesn't matter who you are you can be the victim of abuse you know even if she's a small framed woman you she can still be abusive which we have seen where she's gaslighted him mocking him and because he's not and because he loves her and he wants to believe in the relationship and because he's quite, he's damaged himself she has absolutely utilized that and this again trial by media where they have created this man to be um the, the abuser is so wrong and people say oh it's freedom of speech no it's not it it shouldn't be freedom of speech if it's wrong if it's lies you know, this innocence till proven guilty has disappeared because now you are guilty in the court of the media. 
you know, before it even goes to trial, which is why it's gone to trial, because he was defamed. The whole nature of this, this whole kind of, oh, you know, it, it shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't be watching this. It's, you know, I, I don't want to see it. Well, stop creating it to be entertainment then. This is a serious thing. This man was abused. This is serious. So maybe the media should stop creating it to be entertainment and then it wouldn't be entertainment. You know, this is a man who is clawing back his career after a woman has decided because she because he decided he didn't want to get back with her because he decided he had enough that she decided, oh, it's, you know, and, and because she wanted the money. Oh, I, I'll miss. I don't want anything, but got seven million. And this also seems to be kind of sliding by the wayside. The fact that she got a seven million dollar payout that she promised that she would give to th these two charities but she pledged it and yet she's gone on this uh, I believe it was a Swedish or a, a television show she says the words I donated past tense I've donated that says you've given the money she lied she hasn't given the money and then now it's I pledged it oh I, I use pledge and donation synon no you don't no you don't because otherwise you would have said pledged on that. In, I, I've pledged the this donation. You wouldn't have said I've donated past tense. <sighs> that money was to go towards underprivileged people, people that are struggling and, you know, children, people that have gone through abuse. And she chose to keep the money and her lies of, well, he's now suing me. No, he didn't sue you till 13 months later. So you had 13 months where you had that money in your bank and you still chose to not donate it. Um, and in fact, what you did do was somehow get Elon Musk to donate for, you know, some of the money in your in your behalf. So, oh, I'm actually getting so frustrated. And I'm actually breaking out into a sweat. <laughs> I'm actually breaking out into a menopausal sweat because I'm so, I'm so angry. I just, I find this so frustrating. I see, I see both sides. I have been in a situation with clients where I've worked with people who have been abused and it's horrendous for these people. I myself have been through this. So I know firsthand what it feels like, you know, to see this woman or to see women, and I say women because they are women, lie because for for whatever reason, and now we've got this incident with, like I say, Evan Rachel Wood. Now, again, I'm going to state allegedly, because I know that this is a very triggering subject for people. But again, in the there's no evidence at the moment to show that he's done what he's done, apart from what she's saying. Now, he's coming out and he's now suing her for defamation. Now, in my mind... If you're suing somebody, you know, especially if you've been watching the Johnny Depp trial, you know that evidence is going to come out. So I believe, in my opinion, it stands to reason that if you're guilty, the chances are you're not going to want to sue. You're going to want it to go away. So you're either going to pay somebody off or you're just going to do something to create it to go away or forget about it. Um, he's not. He's suing her. And what's now coming out is that allegedly she uh, pretended to be or people in her circle pretended to be FBI agents to um, and there was some hacking involved trying to hack into his computers and apparently he's got evidence of all of this um, and apparently her ex-partner uh, Jamie Bell has also come out and refuted some of her claims um, so you know again this is kind of early days so obviously I will you know keep you guys informed with this one as well but again this this really does show this toxic femininity and now we also have Harry and Meghan who have gone on and okay this isn't just I mean even though some people can say that he's you know he's not acting like a man um, but have gone on public you know Oprah and accused the royal family of something knowing that they can't fight back um, without any evidence, zero evidence of her being, of them being racist towards her. In fact, if anything, it's the opposite because does do she really think that if they were racist that they would have welcomed her into the royal family? You don't think that as a powerful family would have found a way to not let this wedding happen? They welcomed her. They They opened their arms to her. You know, Charles walked her halfway down the aisle. 
you know, <laughs> you know, it's it, it it just beggars belief that all it takes is someone just to come on national television or do an article and go, this happened with zero evidence. And there are people that will jump all over it. And it's enough now. Trial by media, it's enough for a career to be ruined just on the word of somebody else. I don't know about you, but I find that very worrying indeed. And I find it very um, upsetting that that is all it takes because there are legitimate people out there who have suffered abuse, who struggle to get their, their stories heard. And a lot of the times it is demissed. <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing with my glasses in a minute, demisting my glasses, dismissed. They they get their case dismissed through lack of evidence because their word isn't enough. They need evidence. But with celebrities, it seems, or uh, it seems that that's all it takes. Trial by media, you only have to say it and we believe it. Well, some of us do. and But thankfully, not all of us do. And it's us YouTubers that keep this the truth out there or what we believe to be the truth because we use our brains you guys in my lovely bubble family you use your brains you don't just go by hearsay you go by looking at facts and that's all i encourage you to do before you judge anybody look at facts don't just jump on a bandwagon because it seems the trend look at the evidence look at the facts and then come to the conclusion that you come to so let me know what you think in the comments, guys. As always, I love you. You know that. And thank you to everybody who has who is buying my merch. Um, thank you to everybody who has bought me a cup of tea. Thank you to everybody who is supporting my channel, whether it be your sharing, liking, subscribing, whatever you're doing. Um, and as always, I appreciate you. So I will be back tomorrow with another video. Uh, don't forget to... Um, uh, this, my live with Trev is this Saturday at 7pm, not Friday. I will put something up in the community page. Um, so I'll see you then. So take care, Bubble family. Mwah. Bye.